Zambula. I'm Tuni Zuxeldin, your host, coming to you from the beautiful Pamto Cafe, where great ambience meets great food. Welcome to Her Story, the talk show that delves deep into the lives and experiences of remarkable women in Bhutan. From groundbreaking achievements to personal journeys of resilience, join us as we uncover the untold stories that define and inspire. Each episode is a testament to the strength, diversity and empowerment of women everywhere. Let's meet our guest for today. This 21-year-old singer has already made a name for herself. Front woman for the band Lama Cousins and the Aces, she has managed to steal hearts with her strong and powerful voice. Ladies and gentlemen, we have Vishen Yudin Lama. Hi, how are you doing? <laughs> I'm doing good, sir. Okay. Vishen, first of all, let me take this time to thank you for taking uh, time out of a very busy schedule. You have your music video that's releasing today. Well, by the time this episode comes out on air, it will have been a couple of days later. But congratulations on thank that. Thank you so Vichin. much. What's keeping you busy of late? Uh, lately, I've been busy with my band only, like performing in Music Fest. And then I, uh, recently, I was doing a skit for the Silver Jubilee at YDF. I was singing and acting as well. Yeah, and I've been recording and collaborating with many artists, coming up with new songs. And that's been keeping me busy these days. There seems to be a lot happening, which is good. How are you keeping up with your busy schedule? When I'm home, when, I'm, when I don't have like a busy schedule, I'm just home, just lying on my bed, sleeping, which is very tiring at times. I feel just tired and like, but then when I have like a busy schedule, I'm like finishing up my work and I feel like I feel very productive. I'm like, oh, thank God I did this much today. I'm so happy. I didn't just lie around and just play on my phone. I'm like, I did this. I, it makes me happy. So when I feel exhausted and all, I, at some point I do get happy. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, there's the satisfaction you yeah. get. I, see. I get okay. satisfied. Yeah. All right. But what do you do to relax and get this time for yourself and energize yourself? Oh, so to energize myself, I go and walk with my dog. I have a pet dog, oh, a small okay. one. So I take him for a walk. I go shopping with my mom, talk with my mom. It's so much fun, like a mother-daughter conversation, but more like a friend. We wow. gossip, we talk about it. It's like very relaxing. It's like a chill time because during the daytime, my sister goes to her school and it's just me and my mom home. So it's just the two of us talking. You like, have all the attention. Yeah. No one's taking yeah, attention yeah. No away one's from mom. You. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. yeah. Your mom is just having a very nice conversation and just sleeping and then sometimes just making delicious food and eating, which is fun. Yeah. Oh, wow. How, do, how does it feel? I mean, it sounds like you have this beautiful relationship with your mother. How does it feel to have another woman in your life? I mean, apart from yourself, right? Um, where uh, In whom you can confide and someone who you can trust. It's really good because as a woman, she understands me. She knows what I'm going through and she relates to me. At some point, I feel like my mother has been my role model because she's very strong, firstly. So I look up to her. So uh, when I have my issues, when I'm going through some trouble, I just uh, talk with my mom and she, she doesn't judge me. She doesn't criticize me. So she's like, okay, I know what you must be going through. You just take your time because she's, I feel like she has been through that stage. So she knows how to guide me which is really good. So every time I'm like stressed out, I'm like having something going on with myself, I just go to her and like uh, ask what I should do, like go for some guidance, which is very nice. That's like, apart from me, myself, she's been like the strongest woman to me. So oh, I just okay. go to her. Yeah. When you say strong, what do you mean? What kind of strength does your mother exude? Um, like mentally and emotionally, she knows how to like uh, not uh, how to not get affected by what the other people say mm -hmm. about her like even when I was like uh, after high school I just finished my high school I didn't continue my college so I didn't really have interest in uh, studies so but then I did get a call from colleges and my mom knew that I was more into music so she was like okay Dichan, you sure you want to study if you don't you can take a break and you can focus on music which I think nobody would say mm -hmm. but then I was like yes please can I do that she was like yeah and if you really do feel like studying, we can just continue somewhere else. And I took singing as a career for like one year during the gap. I just did. And then it just like, it spiked up that time. And she, she's really proud of me that, and yeah, while doing so, uh, 
I did get criticized a lot of times uh, by my fam, uh, relatives, my cousins, because I am the eldest daughter. So, and we are only two daughters. So, as an eldest daughter, being just like studying till high school and just focusing on music, you get lots, of, lots of criticism and all from the uh, society, from the peop, uh, the relatives and all. But my mom was strong enough. She was like, okay, she's doing really good. I trust in her. If I didn't, then. She would have like whatever she wants to do. If she it makes her happy, she, let her do it. That was the wow. yeah. And then it must be really nice having yeah, such a strong support. It is. It is. Even when uh, my relatives uh, used to say bad things about me, like they used to like belittle me at times because and then compare me with their kids. They're like, oh my daughter is off to college. My son is off to college. They are going to Australia, Canada, and then. I used to get very sad, but then my mom's like, Dishan, it's fine. Take your time. No, no one's in a hurry. You're just 20. You take your True. time. Yeah. And you have plans to go to college now? Yeah. Tell me more about oh, it. So the, the best <laughs> thing. <laughs> I'm loving this excitement. I'm very happy for you. So you must share it with us. I'm so excited. So uh, I was just like, I had like a normal gig I was doing, but then it was like at the palace. It was during the YTF's. Uh, uh, it was like a even something. Mm -hmm. uh, it was the foundation day of YDF. Mm -hmm. So my band was called and it was recommended by M Studio. I was singing and Her Majesty Gelium Tsing Pem Wanchu, she approached me. Mm -hmm. And that time I was uh, seeking scholarship. I was like looking for op opportunities. I could grab a scholarship because music colleges are very expensive. Mm -hmm. and oh, you want to study music? Yeah, yeah. That's, wow. yeah, that's why I didn't go to college. <laughs> wow, okay. Because I did get opportunities to study other things apart from music but I really wanted to study music only and my mom understood that yeah. so she didn't like force me to go to this college mm -hmm. so and that time uh, Gilliam asked me if I uh, what I was up to recently so I, I told her I'm doing music and that time I finished my musical theatre Greece I did the Greece and she remembered me somehow yeah which was really and she, uh, Gilliam was like oh you were the one who played Sandy I was like yes <laughs> That's so nice. And then she was like, oh, what are you doing these days? So I said, I'm looking for scholarship. I wanted to study. And she asked me what I really wanted to study. I said that I wanted to pursue music. And then she granted me uh, support from herself to study, for me to study music. And YDF connected with Indian Embassy. And they have, uh, now I'll, I'll soon be going to India to study music. Especially vocals. <laughs> wow. Thank you. So How does it feel? You have always dream. I think you are one of those people who know what you want in life. Yeah. And you, you, you make things happen. And somehow this happened all of a sudden, Memo, out of yeah. nowhere. Sometimes we know what we want, but we don't really know the path we'll yeah. take to get there. And it does come true for you. How does that feel? Oh my God. I'm stoked right now. I'm very excited, but nervous as well. But yeah, I'll be studying what I like. I'll, I'm the most happiest when I'm singing. So I bet I'll be the happiest. Wow. So you're uh, hopefully going to college this year? Yes, this year. Wow, okay. By end of this year. I see. I'm very happy for you. Congratulations Thanks. once again. How did you get into singing? How did you start singing? I started, so uh, when I was young, I used to love like books to read books especially like Disney movies I like they had this books like Disney like Cinderella Snow White I used to love to read them but when the animated version came they had songs yeah. like small songs like, I used to love them and then one time I remember I won this um, reading competition where I stood second so my father bought me those CDs like oh, CDs yes. with nursery rhymes, mm. just nursery rhyme. So that time I didn't have like access to internet or anything. So I used to put that ca uh, CD cassette in the TV and then I used to watch those nursery rhymes and I used to sing that all night. Wow. The only song I knew was nursery rhyme that wow. time. And then one time my sister came to my place, place my cousin, and my mom told, she really loves English songs. Why don't you download some music videos? And then it was like, I was like, what, nine or 10 years. So my mom was really supportive that time also. And my mom told my cousin, she really loves English songs. Why don't you, when you are in college, uh, like in your office, mm. you, you have 
access to internet so maybe download some Aww. music videos and just bring it and she'll put it in her computer and she'll listen to it and that's when uh, before that i used to listen to selena gomez ariana grande everything like the pop the everything Nicki minaj everything yeah. but when she came with um, loads of like downloaded music video it was all country oh okay yeah. <laughs> all right that's when my part changed like my genre like my taste in music changed she brought in all like uh, Josh Turner, John Denver. She brought the uh, classic ones. I had no options, but then but I to listen to them and love it. Yeah, and I started loving country. After that, I was like, it I is. Uh, you say it's one of your, it's your favorite genre. It's my favorite. Who's genre. your favorite country singer? I love Keith Urban. Oh, okay. Oh my all God. Right. My only dream is to perform uh, with Keith Urban. This, especially the song "Somebody Like You." Yes. <laughs> yeah, I I've love. I've heard it. you sing. And you're brilliant. <laughs> And you know, at the rate you're making your dreams come true, I think you will be singing with Keith Urban very soon. You have, yes, very strong manifestation power. The Chen, so um, let's go back to when you were younger. Could you share with us one childhood memory, a core memory that has shaped who you are? It, or could it be, perhaps be the CD experience uh, or would it be something else that has uh, made the person that so, you are now? Yeah, so my mom, uh, me and my sister had a curfew. By 9 p.m. we are off to bed, nothing. And then till 9 we could enjoy television, we could listen to music, but then after 10 we were like, we head straight to bed. bed. So after that, if I couldn't sleep, I, I used to sing out loud, uh -huh. just nursery rhymes though. Yeah. Every time I used to sing nursery rhyme and then <laughs> fall asleep. So that was like a core me memory that mm. has shaped me now because it started all from nursery rhymes, nursery rhymes. Yeah. and the thing is one time it was like it was like a dream at school i was in class three and they had this nursery rhyme competition mm. i i was so happy i dressed like an old lady i carried my teddy bear yeah. and it was like hasha bye baby that was oh, my wow. <laughs> nursery yeah. rhyme that i was singing i took it on the table i kept my doll as a baby I slept there in front of the whole school, imagine me. And you sang? <laughs> yeah, I was in my own world. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Were you always this confident? The thing was, my class teacher that time, it, her name was Madam Kilewangmo. She was such a nice teacher. She never uh, made, me, uh, made me or any other student feel like lesser. Mm. Whenever it came to anything, she used to like pick pick everyone like everyone do like an audition and if you're good she's like you know you can't uh, you feel like you uh, you can't do it but I know you can do it and when the time came like though we are struggling mm -hmm. though we, we were so bad she was like this you did great and that's how we we're like okay wow. I'm happy as a young modern woman yourself what according to you uh, will enable a woman to be strong what are some qualities or features or characteristics she needs to hone or have for her to be strong not care about others op opinion like even if they do uh, as for me like when i hear like negative comments i take it positively like i hear like oh you should do that i'm like Okay, how can I do that? Mm. What what's supposed to be done? Not like oh you, you uh, you're doing that wrong. I just like can't get angry on it. You should be humble mm. when somebody like uh, makes certain comments on you. You should be like okay, Duchen, you don't sing good. I'm like okay, how can I improve that? Mm. Not like get angry and have that ego. You have to be humble and not care like even if they say the like the what to say the worst thing. Mm -hmm. You just tend to like okay, just like. Take care. You don't get angry. Do you get bothered by oh uh, my God. criticism on social media, especially because it's very blatant and yeah. unfiltered? There. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, one time I had this comment where the comment, oh, you don't uh, interact with the crowd. How boring of you. Mm. Yeah. Now that is a constructive yeah, criticism. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, okay. Next so time, have I'll you worked on that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I am, every every time I perform, I'm like very nervous. I'm like, how can how should I talk with them? How should, especially during the mega fest. That that was the comment I received. Oh, oh. Dishan doesn't talk much. It's so boring to even. It's it's just her singing, wow. which is like okay. That's a feedback, not even a uh, like negative comments. So I was like, okay, I'll improve on that. But there are some people who are like, oh, Dishan, uh, a high school girl. She was my classmate. She was so bad, but now she has grown this, that. I'm like, okay. I think once you become 
a public figure, whether you like it or not, you will have comments mm -hmm. and it is up to you to decide which you want to take in and which you want to just let be. How does your, um, how about support system? I, I have like lots of support system, my friends, even Kelly Doji, Ed Gray, he's been my uh, biggest support system indeed because the first time I started singing it was at Gray. So Grey has been like four years now, and me, I'm about to be four years with Grey. <laughs> yeah. How did you meet Kelly Doji, and how did Grey come into your life? Uh, it was uh, when I was in high school, when I was in class 11. So there was this competition at Mojo Park, Bakhtasha competition. It was like artists, uh, like bands and solo singers performing their originals and their singing. And then it was something I really wanted to uh, like participate in. So I got in contact with them and I registered my name with my two friends who was a guitarist and a beatboxer. And the three of us, we went there. And it was my first time singing in front of the crowd and Mojo was so new to me. I've never gotten inside of Mojo. It was that time I was 16 years old. I was like intimidated, but then I was like, okay, let's go. The three of us went just 16 years of mm. old. Every one of us, <laughs> we went, one was playing it, one was beatboxing. I was that nervous that, you know, Ausuf, no? Yes. And he came to me and he was like, stop, 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 Dishan. Listen to the music and the beat properly because I was going somewhere. And were, yeah, I got embarrassed, but then okay, okay, and I did my part. I was like, what? One hour I had to perform. I did my part, and the thing was the criteria for the thing was um, you had to have two original. You uh -huh. had to have like two original, one Zonga and one English. But I heard that it was both English. Oh no! And I made both English, and then I finished my mine. I came down and. Uh, I was supposed to say, Chen, you have such a nice voice, but you know what? You had to have like two originals, one Zongha and one English. But yours is both English, so you are disqualified. <gasps> yeah. On spot, I came out, I cried. Obviously, I would have cried too. And the thing is, my mom was there also at Mojo. And she was like, let's go home. We went home. And two years, I got a call from Sup. So for two years, you didn't perform there after? I didn't. Okay. After that also, in school also, when they told me to sing, I never sang. I was that like I felt very shy that time. I was like, I need practice. I need practice. No, I don't have practice to perform in front of the people. And then one time, I got a call from Sub. I was Sub. He was like, Dishan, there's a new place called Grey Area by Kelly Doji, and he wants fresh face. And I know you have a nice voice because by then I had like uploaded several uh, cover videos in YouTube. And then I said like, okay, let me try. And he was like, yeah, just one night, don't worry about anything, you just go there and just sing. And I called my brother, my cousin, and I was like, can, uh, Acho, can we do this? Like, I got this offer, let's try singing once again. And he was like, yeah, yeah, sure. Because he used to be the guitarist for Jurme, Ajim Jurme. So I was confident in him. We went to the night, and the thing is, Kelly Doji promoted me in such a way that people were like packed at Grey Area. Oh, wow. Yeah, he was like, we met for just once. I met him before I went to Grey Area. He's like, Dishan, this is the area. Look at this, look at that. And I came and he was like, oh, the first country singer in mm. Thimphu. And I was really happy because first country singer, that was like some achievement. So when I got there, they were like, too many people. I got nervous. Of course. The first time I sang, I was like shaking. I don't know what to do. I was like shaking, my voice was vibrating. But then the crowd was so sweet. They were like, oh, you're doing great. Kelduji was also like, oh, you're, Chen, you're doing great. I finished. I came home nervous. I was like, but I was really happy. And then I, I get a text from Kelduji. He was like, Chen, you're really good. Would you like to perform every Friday? Wow. Yeah. And since then, I've been performing every Friday till date. <laughs> From grey area to music festivals to National Day celebrations, <laughs> you saw yourself progress so well. It was a slap on all the people that's who said, right. who that's said right. you couldn't and yeah. you shouldn't. That's what a mom says as well. Yeah, because I remember seeing you on stage for National Day. I think it was on National Day I realized how big you have become. Oh, yeah. And how successful you've become. I have achieved things, but there's so much more to do. Like? So, like going worldwide. Not in, because right now I'm only known in Bhutan. Like there might be people who know me, but then uh, in different places, but they're very minimal. I just want to perform in a world uh, platform, like a big platform. Like I told Keith Urban, <laughs> something like that. Not even, even if I don't reach there, but I want to go outside of Bhutan to perform. 
outside of Bhutan, let there be known that there's a Bhutanese artist, just like Arthur Gunn from Nepal. He, uh, he participated in American Idol and you know he's from Nepal. So just like that, from Bhutan, I want to go like that. Like, let people know that there are talents in Bhutan as well. True. No? True. Like singers, dancers, whatever yeah. there is, I just want to like explore. With your, with, with, a, with studies in um, music, how do you think will, uh, it will impact your life thereafter? Once you have a degree in music, how do you think it will change so your life? So my main uh, motive right now is I'll go for a diploma uh, in India. Mm -hmm. I'll study music for, I guess, two years or 16 months, not sure. I'll come back. And then I'll, uh, my main motive is to get to Berkeley College, music college. Mm -hmm. That's the biggest college. I, I really want to get there. So after India, I'll have like a, a certificate because Indian classical music are very... Uh, they are very good and when you have that certificate uh, like the certain level of uh, uh, like qualification mm -hmm. it's very easier to get in like western colleges oh, wow, in, okay. yeah, yeah so if I have Indian classicals like qualification it'll be much easier for me to get in like Berkeley or anywhere I other see. than that so if I have the chance to go to America for the music college while uh, learning music only I want to get to those platforms where I can like squeeze in myself so that mm. I can like American Idol America's Got Talent wherever I can like the voice I see wow. once I go there and the thing is after I learn music I know what I will need because right now it's just raw I just learn through like imitation mm. like but then by then I'll have like clear like notion on what to do what yeah. not to do while singing how how am i supposed to do certain stuff like how to do this riff that uh, so it'll be much easier for me and trust me by then my voice will be much better i guess <laughs> well it's all we to us <laughs> because we don't know anything about music your voice already sounds beautiful but i'm glad to see how you have you're very clear on what you want and i'm you're on the path, so congratulations on that. Thank you. Talk about congratulations, you have your music video that is coming out tonight, Mo? Yes. today evening. Mo. Yes. Um, tell us about that. So this song is really different compared to what, uh, like, compared to what I've sung. So this song is a mix of pop and country. <laughs> well, country okay. has to be there. Yes, <laughs> it's love of your life, right? <laughs> so my good friend, Sangeet Diyantan, uh, he, he has so many songs. His famous songs was um, from the uh, series Chasing Star. Yes. It was, uh, and from, uh, I met him at Grey Area from, uh, through my friends and he was like, Dishan, we need to collab. You have such a good voice. I was like, yes, but then it's very hard for me to come up with Zonka lyrics. Mm -hmm. And he was like, yeah, I can help you with it. And he made the song and I gave him the beat sample. And I want, this song is about a guy who's asking what he needs uh, to do for a girl and girl is like okay what can you do for me you have to do this you have to do that mm -hmm. you just can't say you love me or something Prove it. Like, yeah 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 <laughs> it's like that so while shooting also the thing is for me acting is very hard but you've acted yeah the, but it took me three months so imagine <laughs> wow but this one and but thankfully, the ones who did my video, the one who acted as uh, my boyfriend, like in the thing, they're all my friends. Mm -hmm. So it was so fun, easy. It was just me being the Shiyutin Lama. It was just the Shiyutin Lama being the Shiyutin Lama in that <laughs> music wow. video. It was so fun. That's why I'm really excited for the music video because I can see myself enjoying, not faking it. Mm -hmm. It was just like me enjoying it. When have you been the proudest of yourself? The proudest of myself was when I received that scholarship from Her Majesty Gillian Singh Pemwachu. That was like my proudest moment. I was like, okay, Dichen, you're doing so great. And not only that, when I performed in front of their majesties, the king, the queen, and the whole country, like there were like 35,000 people at, yeah, for the national day. So that was like my proudest moment, those two. Like, I completely relate to you. I can you still imagine. imagine what happened. Like, I, I can't forget a single detail. Mm -hmm. I, when I'm sleeping also, not even sleeping, when I'm just lying there, I overthink, no? I'm like thinking, oh my God, this day, this happened. I was walking straight. I hear the yeah. crowd roaring, <laughs> the clap. Oh, oh my, my God, goodness. I just, I'm so happy that things are turning the way I want. But when it doesn't also, I'm not sad. Do you ever wonder if you love singing because you love singing? Or is it the positive 
crowd response that you get? Or is it both? Is it, it's both. Mm -hmm. I sing because it makes me happy. When I'm singing, especially, nobody knows this about me, but then when I'm singing in my room, in the bathroom, in the washroom, when I'm like just by myself, it's just like, I'm just swaying my body. I'm just like, okay, singing, having the time of my life. It just makes me happy. Mm. And when I'm happy, the crowd becomes happy as well. Mm. Because I have, this is my like biggest, um, this was, uh, there was this one comment by this um, one girl. She was like, this has made a big impact in my whole life, like my singing career. She said to me, Ajim, the way you sing, nobody sings because Though you don't like communicate with your audience, you seem the most happiest when singing. So when we see you happy, it makes us happy as well. So when I'm singing, I'm just like smiling, enjoying, and that that made them happy as well. So yeah, yeah that's like, wow. very nice. I think this is a very good example of what happens when you, when a woman is allowed to pursue her passion as a career. I'm going to give you a sentence. I want you to complete the sentence. Okay. Dichen Yudun Lama is? A sing A dreamer. Beautiful. All right. Okay, Dichen. We have finished with the first segment. We're now going to go to the, the final segment. go out most of the time because I'm performing. I'm Cinderella. <laughs> Stay in. I love haunted, yeah. I don't want to rewind. I have like I had like lots of fun, so I don't want to rewind. I just want to pause to think. When I'm stressed, when I'm exhausted, I just need a break, but I don't want to go back. Thank you for joining us on this enriching journey through the narratives of incredible women on her story. Their stories remind us of the power of determination, courage, and solidarity. As we continue to share these stories, let us carry forward the lessons learned and the inspiration gained to empower and uplift women in all corners of the world. Until next time, remember that every story shared here adds another chapter to the collective tapestry of her story. Thank you and bye-bye.